This is Eleanor Hospice in Gravesend, one of Kent's busiest hospices. A registered charity, Eleanor provides treatment to over 2,500 people, requiring care and support right across the county. The care that they deliver is free for people of all ages. 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. I have my own little motto, and it's live life hard and fast and every day as if it's your last. You know, life is precious. When people realise they have a shorter time than they thought was likely, actually every moment matters. Their 200 strong staff and 600 volunteers are dedicated to making people's remaining days the best they can be. It's about just letting that person just leave the ward with dignity and respect. I'm sure every nurse in profession cares, but there's something special about hospice. Hi. Eleanor also take their support and treatment right into people's homes. <laughs> to have a really good cry is amazing. <laughs> You may think a hospice is a place people come to die. Some people think as soon as you say the word hospice, that's the end of the road. But it's actually a place people come to live. There's a huge amount to offer. It is full of fun. It is full of laughter. You need to live life to the full. You don't know what's around the corner. So let's make the most of what we've got. After being assessed by one of Eleanor's community nurses, patient Jill arrived at the hospice five days ago, suffering from a brain tumour. Today, Sally, Eleanor's complementary therapist, has come to speak to Jill about some of the therapies she can offer, such as massage, Reiki and aromatherapy. Jill at the moment um, is quite poorly um, and so the complementary therapy will help her in trying to ease her anxieties and stress about her situation that she's in at the moment. Hello, hello Jill, I'm Sally Baker, I'm the complementary therapist and I'm coming here uh, today to offer you a complimentary therapy. What I would tend to offer someone in this situation would be um, Reiki or a very, very gentle uh, massage on maybe her hands or her feet or maybe around her face and head. The Reiki, quite often people don't know what the Reiki is. It's a, it's a, it's a laying of hands mm. on the patient, so there's no manipulation or, or massage, and it's a transfer of energy into that person to rebalance the body systems, and it helps uh, emotionally as well as physically, and um, mentally and spiritually as well. So it helps calming, mm. stress release. That sounds good, doesn't it? Mm. After having a complementary therapy, um, a lot of the um, reactions are that the patient is very relaxed and calm. Typically with um, Reiki, it works where it needs to go at that particular time. So if you're suppressing emotions, that emotion may come out, so you may become tearful. While I'm doing the, the Reiki, I can bring in some essential oils um, as well and so you can have an aroma in the room. So I might bring in something that's nice and soothing and calming, so some lavender is typically very yeah, that's good, uh, isn't it? good for that if you like lavender. Mm. Thank you. Sally will be back later this afternoon to give Jill her complimentary treatment. I knew as soon as I was diagnosed that this is where I wanted to be but it's not a service that you tend to think about until you need it. It's, lost, it's a lot less stressful than being at home because everybody else is taking the strain that my family would have to take. But it doesn't stop me worrying about them. <laughs> it's been the ideal place. You can't, she's just so comfortable here and everyone is genuinely caring. They're not, oh, I don't know how to explain it, you know they truly mean 
what they do, and I'm sure all nurses do, but I think to be an Ellen nurse or anyone that does anything in a hospice, you've got to be that bit more extra special. Jo is Eleanor's ward sister. The 15-bed inpatient ward delivers palliative care to patients and helps them enjoy some quality time with their loved ones. Today, Jo is making special arrangements for a new arrival at the hospice. Annie, my name's Jo. Um, I'm a sister at the Eleanor Hospice in Gravesend. I was talking to Karen at the, on Saturday. You have a patient there who is looking to get to hospice. So the patient that we're going to admit today from um, St Thomas's has got um, uh, quite an unusual um, autoimmune disorder. He spent a long time um, in the local hospital. He was then transferred to uh, London Hospital. The problem is he, his immune system's attacking his internal organs. So his um, esophagus and his trachea have been affected by this disease. So he's got gaps. So instead of it being a tube, there's holes in the tube. So when he eats and drinks, it's going into his lungs, basically. So they've had to create an airway for him surgically. They basically man-made an airway for him in theatre using a piece of equipment called an, an ET tube, which is generally what you'd have in your mouth to ventilate a patient. Um, so this is in his neck, um, and that's maintaining his airway at the minute. So, yeah, he's quite complex. So I need things like Swedish noses, bibs, Due to the life-threatening problem he has with his airway, transferring David from hospital to Eleanor is an extremely risky process. If this all works, it'll be amazing. Absolutely. That's about the best way I can describe it. It will just be amazing. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So I love it when a plan all comes together and everyone's... Everywhere, it's all just got to happen now. Bev is part of Eleanor's care home support team and is preparing to visit the Mayflower care home. Bev and her colleagues work with staff at several local care homes, providing advice and support for residents who are approaching end of life. Today there's patients that have not been seen by the Eleanor and we're just going in really to see how they are to make sure that they've got their comforts and there's no concerns that the staff feel that they could do with our support and generally then have them on our system and then they're on our list then and then as soon as we do need to be involved, we can be. But however, sometimes um, the other challenges could be that I'll go in, do an assessment and actually that person was quite poorly and they do need our input now. Some like the Eleanor involved, some feel safer, some don't like it at all because it's more realisation of how poorly they are. I'm very passionate, it's something I've done now for a long time. Dying's scary for most of us, so it's good to get it right for people and hope that people will do the same for you when, when your time comes. Arriving at Mayflower Care Home, Bev runs into Deputy Manager Wendy, whose aunt recently passed away at Eleanor Hospice. It was lovely. Linda from the Eleanor was there to support um, Mum and the family. So it was really nice. And I think because I've seen this side of Eleanor working within a home, I've not actually seen the side outside of it and being part of the family. Mm. And it was nice and it was lovely. And the support we got was, um, was really good. It is hard to lose somebody and we're, we do it every day, more or less, and we're so used to looking after everyone else, it's quite hard to look after yourself, so it's nice to know there's support out there with your colleagues and we need to look after each other. Everything OK? Any concerns for me or all good? Um, I think Jean wants to talk to you with um, regarding yeah. some of them. Yeah. When I come in, I always report to the nurse in charge and just update on people that I want to see and perhaps they would like me to see. The staff I've known for a while now, quite a long time. We like to think we have banter. Very nice doctor. He's lovely. He's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, OK, that's why you're back. Well... <laughs> However, it's always very professional. So, just going back, Jean, this is the lady 
who was very poorly a year over a year ago yeah. now. Um, and a sort of she's holding her own actually. She's a pretty good. She's still very mobile. But obviously deteriorated a year ago, but has stabled out within yeah. that deterioration. Okay. I mean she tends to get a few more chest infections now than she used to, but she rules the roost here. Yeah. I will when I'm old in a home. Oh, right, okay, lovely. So if Jeanette's ready for us. Yeah, I shall go and get her, be prepared. We she can won't get a word in it, please. Well, I'll try. I'll try my best. Part of Eleanor's all-encompassing hospice care includes the important work done by Chaplain Ben Cooper. He leads and develops the spiritual aspect of the hospice's work. Yeah, when I approach people, yeah, some people think, oh, the end is nigh, he's got a collar on. Um, but it's, it's not like that at all. My role is just literally just to walk with people, journey with people. But pe you can see people's face and they do... Uh, do step back sometimes. I just forget I'm wearing a collar and I just, you know, and the, maybe the, the heaviness that goes along with that might burst in someone's room at nine o'clock in the morning, good morning, and they think, oh, well, hang on a moment. I do find people in the hospice, patients, families, anybody, they do want to talk about the higher, higher being, God, uh, talking about spiritual stuff and, and life beyond death and, and what's happening next and all that. People do and some people just don't want to speak, to, speak about it whatsoever. <laughs> all the patients really have an impact in me, every one of them, whether I'm with them for a few moments or for a couple of weeks or a month. Every patient certainly impacts my life on, on many different levels. So yeah, it does affect you. Without a shadow of a doubt, it definitely affects you. We've had a new patient come in over the last few days. Um, I've briefly been in to see Jill, but at this moment we're going to go down and just have a, just uh, introduce myself maybe a little bit more. She's had family around the bed, so um, if the family's there, I'll put my focus on everybody, really. Just try and draw everybody into the conversation. And if it's just the patient on their own, if it's just Jill, we'll just, just, just see how we go, really. Back on the ward, ward sister Jo has just received news that patient David will be arriving at the hospice today. She's on the phone giving David's wife the good news. OK, we've just spoken to uh, St Thomas's and the ambulance was there and they were literally just about to leave. OK, dog, all ready to go. OK, I'll see you soon. OK, bye, bye. She's very happy, very happy. David has a rare disorder that causes his immune system to attack his own internal organs. The disease has severely damaged his airway, so it's vitally important that all of Eleanor's nursing staff know how to react should David start having difficulty breathing. This man could turn up at any time and I might not necessarily be on the wall to welcome him. Coming into bed eight is our man from St Thomas's. And from a safety point of view as well, everyone needs to know how to, how to deal with his airway, everyone needs to know how to deal with his feeding regime. So it's, it's vital that we hand, we hand over each time and that everyone's confident and com competent um, with, his, you know, with the issues that he's got. Um, the girls from um, community are here, so they're going to support um, day and night. And then it's just to gauge daily um, actually what support is needed. And we've got training this afternoon at two from the dietitians, and we need to get that room ready. Um, there's feed, pump and giving sets in there. So it's just the tracky trolley to set up. OK. All right. Yep. Cool. Lovely. Eleanor's resident chaplain, Ben, has been hoping to spend some time with patient Jill, who is suffering from a brain tumour. But as Ben makes his way to Jill's room, events take an unexpected turn. We well, were just in the chapel. We were just uh, speaking about Jill and I was going to go down there and have some prayer time with her and um, literally just walked down the corridor and um, it seems to be that uh, God has come down and taken her home early. So yes, very, uh, very shocking. Time will literally just stop still for them for the moment. The nurses and the doctors are there, they're doing a fantastic job and they, they just take care of everything. I will be there for prayer if prayer is required. I've just prayed around the bedside with, with the, the daughter and the son-in-law. And just be there, just be a listening ear. 
and just to can continue the journey through. I think I'm shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked, but I'm I'm glad she went like she did. But we just even this morning the the consultant said, you're looking at days, maybe weeks, definitely not months. Yeah. She just asked to be made comfortable on the bed because she was really uncomfortable. Right. And the nurses made her comfortable and she said, oh, she said, that's lovely. And they said, you're going to have a sleep, said yes. Yeah. And they came out of the room, a lady came out and said, Jill wants to be moved again. Yeah. And we went in there and she was just having a seizure. OK. So her eyes were just open. Going, just open. Just wide open. Just wide open. Huge, because she's got huge eyes anyway. And... She sort of sounds slurry, but she wasn't making any sense. And it was minutes. Minutes. Wow. So I'm not sure why I'm upset. Oh, wow. I don't know if I'm as upset as I should be, because I'm still quite shocked. Although it's quick, it's good. It is It's best for Jill. It's not... It's, well, say it's not good for us, but we're being selfish, because obviously we want her around all the time. And her children can't begin to imagine. You're in this bubble that's just not yeah. real. The, the clocks have stopped, the world stopped, yeah. as I far said, as you're concerned. I said at lunchtime with my sister Joy, I said, I don't know how, this was before obviously all this, I said, I don't know how I feel because it, you're in limbo here. Yeah. You're just, you're waiting for something, but you don't know how long you've got to go. And then, ironically, hour and a half later, Jill's been amazing. It's not quite 11 weeks from diagnosis and she's fought all the way. She was incredibly brave. I don't know how she coped with what was going on. I think, I don't know what I would have done if it had been me. Um, and she's an, she's an inspiration to everyone. Sometimes words are yeah. not enough. Silence is, yeah, is the answer. And she said she wants a funeral to be really, really happy and jolly. So I said, clowns, outfits. And she said, no, not quite that far. <laughs> but she does want it all to be nice and jolly. Actually, we've all got quite a sick sense of humour. So we probably will... There will be some sick humour along the way. We've coped with it all the way through with sick, sick humour. And uh, so just remember that we're here for you. I know, thank We're you. here Everyone's for you. Eleanor's here amazing. for you. The Eleanor family is here to look after you, to support you for the rest of your journey. And like you said, yeah. you just got to just think the sister has made the crossing. She's, she's to the other side. She's at peace. She's with her husband. We'd she's like with to her see. husband. Yeah. yeah. Her mum. Her she's mom. desperate to go and see mum and her husband. Yeah. Eleanor's here to support you all the way through. I know. I can't say I'm religious, but it does help, and that's weird. Um, I don't mean the chaplain's weird. I mean it's weird that it is. It is really comforting even though I'm not a religious per person. What he said in the prayer was really touching. It was lovely. Yeah, it does help. Father, I just pray, dear God, for the family, Lord, that are still here, that you will bless them, be with them, Lord, and just give them peace in this time of trouble. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. Oh, amen. Thank you amen. so much. I like, can't thank everyone enough. Everyone's You're been welcome. amazing. You're welcome. Just, I just hope and pray that I give people peace at this, at this really crucial part of their life, whether they may be patients in, in the ward or in the day therapy or family, just, just to really give people peace and just to let them know that there is a way forward and, and there is hope and, and just to give people peace. I just don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll probably just sit quietly and, cos one minute it's real and then it's not. But I'm so glad. She had a perfect morning. She had a perfect morning and she was perfectly with it. So I couldn't ask for anything more. So yeah, uh, I'll go home, I'll sit quietly, I suppose I'll have a laugh, thinking about Jill. And uh, yeah, just wait and see what happens. At hospice reception, ward sister Jo is briefing staff about new patient David's imminent arrival. Okay, so, um, Spoken to St Thomas's yeah. and the transport's on its way. Um, patient's wife should be here in about 10 minutes, so um, just give me a shout when she's here and then give me a shout when the ambulance is here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Patients like this do make me nervous, airways especially, because that is, that's his life. Um, if that airway comes out, 
we can't put it back in, um, which is quite, it goes against the grain of everything you're taught. If an airway comes out, you, you do what you can to, to maintain a patient's airway. In this case, that won't happen. Um, fortunately, it is stitched in place, so that shouldn't happen. Um, but you have to be aware of every eventuality, um, and that, that does make me a little bit nervous. But at the same time, it's exciting and it's a challenge. And it's the kind of thing I thrive on because I like a bit of adrenaline. <laughs> As Joe finishes setting up, David finally arrives at the hospice with his mum, Chris, and wife, Angelina. Getting David here was hard because he's complex, tracky, and, and now he is totally blind. He lost his all eyesight in October. Lovely to meet you. It's a bit of a bump, and then we'll get you get you settled in, all right? It takes a team of eight people to get David successfully transferred into his new bed. Now that he's comfortable, Joe can finally welcome him and his family to Eleanor. I introduced myself earlier, but my name's Joe. I'm the sister on the ward. And yeah, welcome to Eleanor, all of you. Um, such a pleasure to eventually get you here after all this time. Hopefully you settle in. If there's anything you need, please just shout for me and we'll do what we can to make your stay here as comfortable and as happy as possible. Thank you. All right. We wanted David at the Eleanor. It's a very calm environment. It's not hospitalised. They're very laid back, but they do a fantastic job. They really care about their patients. Every member of staff, well, you couldn't wish for better. Bev Collins takes the work of the Eleanor Hospice out to nursing homes across Kent, assessing their residents and promoting palliative care. Today, she's meeting with Jeanette, who lives at the Mayflower Nursing Home. So what's the latest activity you've been up to? Oh well, there was. We had we have a couple come in with, with um, five or six dogs, and they bring. Following a heart attack one year ago, Jeanette's health rapidly declined. She's rallied since, but still needs regular checkups. Oh how nice! The dogs can do all sorts of things. Tricks. Tricks. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, really, really. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, sometimes I have my daughter come, see? And the other um, She takes me out in my wheelchair. Okay. Even if it's windy, yeah. I love going round the, the cemetery. It's a huge cemetery. <laughs> do you know that? Are you familiar <laughs> with it? It's not something I do regularly, but... And I've never seen a cemetery so well looked after. And you like going round the cemetery in your wheelchair? Yes. You're yes. quite a character. Well, you don't appear in discomfort, and you're lovely and bright and alert. Try to be. Well, you're doing it. grand. You're doing good. Now, of course, I do my exercise with uh, that lady. You sit on a chair, and you, you do this, <laughs> and you do that, and catch a falling star, oh, and yeah. put it in your pocket. <laughs> well, I can just about do that with that. Right, OK. Uh, OK. But this is a bit better, is it, than it was? But, um, that. but I can catch the falling star. You do more activity than I do. Hey. You do. Um, there's no concerns. She's settled, she's happy here, she's, she knows everybody, she's got her friends. Uh, and she's enjoying herself, especially the activities. <laughs> right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assist you out now. Walking, yeah. yeah? Right. People like Jeanette would remember me next week, um, whereas somebody with dementia wouldn't know if I was in or out of the building. So we get to know them, but they don't necessarily get to know us. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to empty your head. Sometimes I need to go home and just for half an hour think about stuff and put it in perspective. Um, some things do affect you, but 
this isn't my sadness, this is somebody else's, and it's about me supporting them. And you have to remember you've got your life, your family. And I think if you didn't switch off a bit, it would, it would be really hard to deal with. Back at Eleanor Hospice, new patient David is about to receive a couple of very special visitors. One of them is family dog Millie, who's overjoyed at being reunited with her master. So we've had all kinds of animals in here. We've had monkeys, we've had horses, we've had dogs, we've had cats. David hasn't seen Millie since he was hospitalised at St Thomas's over a month ago. Why shouldn't you bring your pets in? This is, this is home. You know, if you can't be at home, this is the next best thing, so yeah. Hey, a month without seeing her. <laughs> oh, <you're so> <laughs> what can you say about me, Lee? I thought my dog was mad, but no, she, she's worse than that. When they're at home, you know, Millie will lay up on the settee with him. And I think it is, it's just having something there to stroke. And they say animals are very calming, and I do believe them. That to be true. Daddy. <laughs> oh, bless you. Yeah. We're coming tomorrow. It was good for David to have her. David's next visitor is even more special his seven year old son, Jack. Jack's come and seen Dad, and Jack is just behaving like any normal seven-year-old. Um, he's really chatty, he's really happy. The whole family have just relaxed, and it's really nice to see that, that Jack's happy and that, you know, we can, we can sort of help Jack out and um, make things a bit more normal for him. Daddy wants to talk now. Well, not quite. But I can just hear him. You can? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. He is such a good dad. Really, really is a brilliant dad. I mean, David was nine when he lost his dad. Jack's seven. I don't know how hard it's going to be. No, you'll be OK, but it will be hard. For Angie, it's difficult. You know, when you've got a young child and you have to split yourself, and all the hospital appointments and sorting out all the medication and that. But she's done a brilliant job. While David and Jack spend some time together, his brother Nick pops out to fetch David a treat from one of his favourite restaurants. My brother's very particular when it comes to what, what he eats and where he gets it from. He's allowed to pick and choose what he fancies to eat, so at the moment he wants, say, curry from his local curry house that he's been going to for absolute years, so we've just gone away now to pick up the uh, curry. You know, he likes his spices, so if he wants a curry, that's what he goes and gets. It's either that or Chinese, really, of his, of his two favourites. David's personality, I mean, he's a very loving, loyal, loyal guy. You know, he's never really done anything wrong in his life whatsoever. Um, you know, I mean, he's always, he's always been funny, he's always been very sarcastic. Um, also very, very stubborn, unfortunately, but, I mean, that's just part of who he is. Well, the reason it's come to Eleanor, really, is the fact it's so peaceful. Um, I mean, we've had experience with them with the Eleanor in the past, um, with, our, with our father 25 years ago, and then our stepdad was in there um, for a little period of time, about five years ago before he passed away. So we've known the Eleanor on and off for a number of years, you know, and they've always been, to, to be honest, totally amazing. Yesterday, really, was the first time he's actually been able to sit in a chair and actually got try and act half, half normal, really. And I mean, the difference in the last 24 hours for my brother, where he's actually sitting up, laughing and joking, and actually being himself again, he's, we've not seen that in absolute months. How am I coping? Well, to be honest, just haven't got much of a choice at the moment at the end of the day. Um, you know, still got, still, life still goes on on the outside, unfortunately. You know, I've got a ne nephew to look after, I've got my daughter in the back to look after. You know, we need to make sure mum's all right and all the family all right, and then in between that, you've still got work to do, so... We just sort of got to carry on, really. You haven't got any, any other choice. Meanwhile, one of Eleanor's respite nurses, Linda, is arriving at the home of one of the hospice's many community patients, Terence, who has chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. 
Respite care is vitally important as it allows caregivers the time to rest, rejuvenate and reduce the stress levels often associated with caregiving. Oh, hello, hello, Linda. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine, Good. yes, yes. Hear nice it, hearing you. aids? Pardon? Hearing aids all right? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I can hear absolutely everything now. What sort of night did Terry have? Is he... Not too bad. Yeah. He only woke up twice. Right. So I didn't feel too bad about that. I went mm. in and I gave him a little drink and uh, just sat with him a little bit yes. until his eyes were just closing a little bit and I thought, right, I just nipped back and uh, he was fine after sure. that. Are you hoping to go out today? Yes, I thought I'd go and see my daughter-in-law, Laura. Oh, um, very nice. Have a look at the cats. Yes, I, I really yes. enjoy that. I find that it's just a little bit of um, relaxation and uh, she's got three lovely cats herself. So, oh, right, Which I love. I don't know what they are, but oh, they are... The fur is just like silk. Mm -hmm. I've never seen cats like them. Yes. It's not far away either. No, you know, being no. a quarter of an hour in the car, mm -hmm. I just go and uh, have a cup of coffee and... So a couple of hours break is usually enough, isn't it? Yeah, it mm. is, yes. Yeah, yeah. so good. Yeah, mm. I find it... You know, you yeah. come back refreshed. OK, then, right. Well, I'll, if I just take this off and yes. then we'll, we'll yeah, go to see right. Terry, shall we? Morning, Terry. Good morning. Morning. How are you today? Oh, not bad. Not bad? Good? Not bad. No, Susan said you had quite a good night's sleep. Mm. Yeah? So, would you like coffee now or a bit later? Well, yeah, yeah. You'd like it now? Right. OK, then. Not only am I coming in here to give Susan respite, I'm also coming in to see what Terry's needs are. If you want to go off out and I'll okay, deal then. with I'll his coffee yes. and uh, yeah, well, I'll make sure he drinks it. Yeah, All right. two sugars. You know, yes, like oh, I know. Too. Yes. <laughs> OK, then. OK. Right. Bye for now. I think it's very important for them, for the carer of that person that is housebound to be able to get out because um, it keeps them sane, basically. <laughs> My husband of 51 years um, has to rely on uh, the carers who come three times a day and also I have a night nurse that comes three nights a week uh, to allow me to have a proper sleep. I feel I can cope knowing that I've got other people helping me and the support I have. I think if I didn't have that, I think I could go to pieces to be perfectly honest. I mean, I've shed a thousand tears over this. It's a pity that we can't sort of carry on a proper conversation, you know, because he is confused as well. And I miss having my own life, if you like, you know. And that's hard. My son and daughter-in-law are very supportive. And if I knew if, if something happened or whatnot, um, they would, uh, they'd be with me in a shot, you know, and I get Linda, she comes every week and allows me to have two hours, what you call respite. And uh, I can either go to um, Laura or sometimes I go to um, a WI market and that's very nice too just to sit and have a cup of coffee, have a chat with someone you don't know, never met, put the world to right. I come away and I feel I'm so pleased, you know, I've had a bit of a break, it's lovely. Simple pleasures, I find, are the best. Eleanor Hospice's newest patient, David, has requested his favourite meal for dinner. His brother Nick has headed out to pick it up. He's been in hospital for about the last four months. My now it's just got a lot worse, so he said he wanted a curry for dinner tonight, so yeah. we pick it up now. They'll blend it up there so he can have it all pureed, and then he'll be able to have his curry from his favourite curry house. Oh, <laughs> That's what he said, so... Well, thank you very much, Well, yeah. right, I'll catch you soon. Good all right, I'll see you soon, all right? Take care. 
I mean, this is probably the bravest and strongest man that I've ever met. I mean, what he's had to go through for like the last 13 years of his life, uh, from being completely like normal, so to speak, working in London, driving a car, to suddenly being completely bedridden, blind, and you know, not long to live. I mean, how he's dealt with it and how he's handled it all them years is just, un well, words can't describe it. I mean, I, I really couldn't describe how proud and uh, um, proud I am of my brother. In all honesty, I mean, he is the strongest man that I know, without a doubt. David's illness has left him unable to swallow solid food, but that's not going to stop him enjoying his curry. Hi, David wanted curry for tonight. David loves curries. It was just a matter of time when he fancied it. <laughs> Can you puree it? What, and the you? rice? Yeah, I think, because just in case all it takes okay. is one little grain. He used to do all the cooking at home. Even though he was partially sighted, he, he did all the cooking. He used to watch all the cookery programmes and he'd adapt their recipes to his taste. So we never had any what I call normal dinners. They were always tarted up. Yes, yes, that's fine. All right, okay, come on then. Thanks. David wanted a curry and as he can only eat pureed food, I'm going to puree half of it later and I've never pureed rice, so it's a first, but we'll give it a go and um, I shall take it up there later when he wants it. So, he should enjoy it, hopefully. Sue Martin is her husband Terence's full-time carer. This afternoon, thanks to Eleanor Hospice, Sue is enjoying some respite, visiting her daughter-in-law Laura's cat sanctuary in Bexley Heath. Oh, hi, Laura, all right? Oh, lovely to see you. How are yeah. you? Okay, thanks. Yes, yeah. Terry's all right and everything. Linda's Good. come. Good. So yeah, everything's all fine. Excellent. Yeah. Nice to see the cats. Yeah, I'd love to. This is Louie. Hello, Louie. Hello, darling. This one's Frida, is it? Frodo. 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 Let's say hello. Come on. Come on. Oh. Tigger and Tiger Lily. They look so comfortable, don't they? <laughs> Is that lovely? Go on, you eat your food. Yeah. Lovely markings, aren't they? After cooing over the cats, Sue and Laura head inside for a chat about Terence, who is back home under the careful watch of respite nurse Linda. Right, I'm just bringing the back up, all right? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Try again. Generally speaking, I think she is just so overjoyed at being able to get out and do something without worrying about Terry. And she's so very grateful every time I come here, you know. I mean, she's even got to the extent that she gives me a kiss on the cheek when I arrive and when I go. She's just so grateful because, you know, she's able to do what she can. He sleeps such a lot, though, these days. Yeah. You know, he really does. Uh, he's done so well, hasn't he? He has done well, when I think about it. You know, everybody's surprised, from the um, community nurse, the doctor, Eleanor. They can't believe it. As the doctor said, it's like highs and lows. It's like, you know, roller coaster with him. Mm. One minute, as you know, he can be really poorly, and I'm ringing you up and saying, oh, dear, you know. And then the next day, yeah, I say, he's bounced back. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, amazing. and I think that's what it's all about, really, you know. But uh, I just treat it as it comes every day. I can't do any more, can no, I? No. I do the best I can. That's all I can do is I, I do the best, and I'm satisfied I do the best mm. for him. He has all you the do, help. You do very well. He has all the help that he can possibly have, of which I'm very grateful for, you know that. Mm. And I do, I, wouldn't, I couldn't be without you, you and Anthony. Yeah. We do what we can to help, but you do it all. You, you look after him every day and take care of him. No, I'm fine. He's sitting. I don't know. He's 
sometimes just it's not far away. Mm. You know what I mean? No, stupid of me. It just comes over you at times, you know, and you can't stop it. But it's it's a relief when you had a few tears. You that's it. You feel all right once you've got over it. But I think in a situation like this, you can't avoid being emotional. It's so different if you've got somebody that's ill and you're nursing them and you hope that every day they're going to become a little bit better mm -hmm. and you can see that in them. But with Terry, you can't. It's not like that, no. You know, you're, you're nursing something that in the end, you know, it's not going to be good, mm -hmm. you know. I think it's a very emotional time that you're going through. You know, and uh, you try and be as strong. Sometimes you're stronger than others, other times, you know, but it, sometimes it just hits a nerve and, um, you know, just can't help myself really, but it doesn't last for long. When I used to put the key in the door, I used to think, I wonder what I'm coming back to. But it's very comforting to know I've got this backup. I think all the nurses and that are so great, you know. I, I personally think they have to be very special to do it. I know that I couldn't do it. And they're so kind, you know. They've got a lovely nature. They really are. They're lovely people. I take my hat off to them. I really do. Hi, we're back. Oh, hi. Yeah, yourself? no, lovely. Nice. Yeah, nice hi. to see you, uh, Laura and the cats. Yes, yeah, yeah really Johnny lovely. Good. Yes. Oh, so, good. Yeah. He's been fine. You've been very sleepy. Yeah, he seems to be good. like that at the moment, yeah. you know. Well, thanks ever so much. I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> You're my lifeline. You really are. Yes, I think it went very well today. Um, Sue seemed to enjoy herself and uh, Terry seems very settled, sleeping most of the time. It's so well worth it because Sue absolutely loves her time out and I think she needs that. The reason I do my job um, is because, A, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy being able to help people. And also it gives me something to get up for in the morning. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. It's always nice to see Linda. Oh, I had such a lovely morning and she's so kind staying here. No, I don't know what I'd do without her, I really don't. It's dinner time at Eleanor and catering assistant Deborah is preparing David's much anticipated meal. It doesn't surprise me that he wanted a curry and I've just been to the kitchen and he has got special curry dishes and they're going to serve it up as if he was in the curry house. Can't ask for anything more. And here you have it. One pureed, one normal. Hiya. That's David. Absolutely smells amazing out on the ward. Made me feel really hungry. No. I mean, to a certain extent, it's good that he can't see what's on the plate because it does look like a load of mush. But it's all the taste, it's the flavours that he hasn't been able to have. Spice. Mm. <laughs> I think they did good, though. Yeah, they did so good. David told me I'm so happy. They're just, yeah, his brother's just said to me, he looks different already. I'm proud of myself. It's, I've, it's not just me, it's everyone. And everyone's done their bit and we've all come together and the people in St Thomas's and, you know, the patient's family and relatives and, yeah, it's, everyone's done their little bit and it's all, it's all come together really well. So just the fact that he's, you know, he's, he's relaxed and he's just pleased to be here. Yeah, definitely a job well done. Come in a bit. That's the only thing I'm missing now. You are. We've had a great laugh today. In there, David's been on really good form. <laughs> the Eleanor is a happy place, even though a lot, lot of people is, it is for them end of life. Yes, we all have our tears. We all shed our tears, but the time for grieving is after. 
that will be our time. This is David's time and we're going to make sure he gets the most out of it. That's it.